Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Would you like to be part of a family or live by yourself? Many say family, Bear. So if you did not have a family, would you want to visit your friend's family? Hmm. Well, Baxter the dog lives by himself, but his friends are about to go on a family reunion trip, and Baxter really wishes he could share in their fun. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Baxter can figure out a way to go with the birds. B for Baxter by Ted Simonin. One day, Baxter was sitting in his backyard thinking about how to build the ultimate ball throwing machine when he heard a voice calling his name. Baxter, said the voice and Baxter turned to see his friend Marcus land on the fence. It's so nice to see you. I've brought someone I want you to meet. This is my sister, Fiona. It's nice to meet you, Baxter, said Fiona. My brother has told me so much about you. We're getting ready to fly south, explained Marcus. This time each year we meet our parents at our family tree in Florida for our annual reunion. You're flying all the way to Florida for a family reunion? Sounds like fun! Count me in, said Baxter. Fiona glanced at her brother. Count me in, she whispered. But Baxter's not part of our family. Then she turned and said loudly, But Baxter, how will you get to Florida? You don't have wings to fly. As quickly as he could, Baxter ran to his doghouse. He dove in head first, threw things everywhere, and pulled out... A state-of-the-art jetpack! Baxter threw the jetpack over his shoulders and shot straight into the air. Woohoo! cried Baxter. There's no better way to fly! Come on, Fiona, let's go, Marcus said. Really, Marcus? You're inviting a dog to our family reunion? Trust me, Fiona. Baxter's not just some dumb dog. You will grow to love him, I promise. And with those words, Baxter and the two birds took to the sky. They flew over mountains and valleys and trees. And a few days later... Look, said Marcus. There's the Grand Canyon! Marcus and I stop here every year, said Fiona. It's a family tradition. Last year, we found a piece of driftwood and floated down the river all day long. You floated down the river, said Baxter. I have an idea. Let's land! Baxter and the two birds flew to the ground and landed next to the Colorado River. As quickly as he could, Baxter unzipped the zipper on his jetpack, reached deep inside, and pulled out a large raft with three paddles. Who wants to go rafting? asked Baxter. And for the rest of the day, Baxter and the two birds talked and laughed and had a wonderful time traveling down the river until finally 
Marcus and Fiona landed on a nearby tree, and Baxter plopped down on the ground. Baxter, how did you fit that raft into your jet pack? asked Fiona. It was easy, said Baxter. I scanned it with the light rays from my supersonic shrinking machine. If you'd like, I'll show it to you when we get home. I'd like that, said Fiona. And with those words, the three of them fell fast asleep. The next morning, Baxter and the two birds took to the sky again. They flew over rivers and fields and dirt-covered roads. And a few days later, look, said Marcus, there's the city of New Orleans. Marcus and I always stop here too, said Fiona. Last year, we listened to live jazz music in the streets for hours and hours. Live music, said Baxter. I have an idea. Let's land. Baxter and the two birds flew to the ground and landed on Bourbon Street. As quickly as he could, Baxter unzipped the zipper on his jetpack, reached in as far as he could, and pulled out a piano, a saxophone, and a trumpet. Who wants to make some music? asked Baxter. And for the rest of the day, Baxter pounded on the keys of the piano. Fiona poured her heart into the saxophone, and Marcus blew every last breath into the trumpet. The three of them had a grand old time, until finally, Marcus and Fiona landed on a nearby tree, and Baxter plopped down on a patch of grass. Baxter, where did you learn how to play the piano like that? asked Fiona. It was easy, said Baxter. I have a baby grand piano in my doghouse, and I practice every day. If you'd like, I'll show it to you when we get home. I'd like that, said Fiona. And with those words, the three of them fell fast asleep. The next morning, Baxter and the two birds took to the sky again. They flew over water and beaches and gator-filled swamps. And a few days later, look, said Fiona, we made it. There's our family tree. Baxter and the two birds flew to the ground. They looked around for Marcus and Fiona's family, but soon realized no one was to be found. That's odd, said Fiona. They always meet us here every year. Suddenly, Baxter spotted a square piece of wood not far from the tree. Look! He picked it up and gave it to Marcus. Marcus closely examined the piece of wood. It's a note from Mom and Dad. Dear Marcus and Fiona, the Pelicans invited us to a wedding on the eastern shore, and we all went together. We'll be back early on Saturday. Love. Mom, Dad, and the whole family. Thank goodness you found that note, Baxter, said Fiona. Suddenly, Baxter noticed something carved into the bark of the tree. He moved closer to get a better look. What are all these words carved into the branches, asked Baxter. As he moved closer, he noticed something special about the words. Wait a minute, he said. They're all names. Fiona does all the carving, explained Marcus. That's right, Fiona said proudly. 
I've got the pointiest beak in the whole family. I can carve a name into a tree faster than a woodpecker. Look at this. Fiona flew to a branch. Here's my name. F-I-O-N-A, Fiona. And here's M-A-R-C-U-S, Marcus. And L-O-I-S, Lois. That spells my mother's name. And here's my father, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, Raymond. Wow, said Baxter. You weren't kidding. This really is a family tree. Marcus and Fiona helped Baxter read every name on the tree. Finally, the two birds landed on different branches and Baxter plopped down on a patch of grass. I can't wait for you to meet the rest of our family, Baxter, said Fiona. I know, said Baxter. After reading all their names, I feel like I know everyone already. And with those words, the three of them fell fast asleep. That night, Baxter found himself tossing and turning. The next morning, he awoke with a tremendous yawn. Are they building a highway or something? He asked. I kept hearing a jackhammer or some sort of... But before Baxter could finish what he was saying, he glanced up at the tree and noticed the letter B. Then he noticed the letters A, X, T, E, R. That spells Baxter, he said to himself. He looked up into the tree and saw Fiona smiling. And when Baxter realized what Fiona had done, he gave her the biggest hug there ever was. Bear's wondering, do you think Baxter will make a good brother? Yes, Bear. They're saying Baxter likes to share. Well, Bear's asking if you think the birds will like sharing with Baxter, too. Many yeses, Bear. They're saying Baxter and the birds have more fun sharing. So, do you think everyone's happier now? Well, Bear's hoping you come back soon for more adventures in growing families. Bye for now. Please subscribe.